Now let's start with the modification details. This is what we mentioned in early uh, session that um, the Bryston uh, design is very simple to work with as this um, modular design. You can see this is the, the power amplification module for one of the channel. And after removing a few screws, you can easily unplug from this main chassis so you can work separately on this um, power session. And as I mentioned, mostly we'll focus on the modification of this power session. And you can see this is the main PCB with the, with the power transistors. And then we have the two extension board, which are the, the so-called triggering board in serial of the output stage. And the modification is basically put these in parallel by modifying the circuitry so we can improve the output current uh, capacity and improve the, uh, the damping factor as the newer version like uh, the SST and SST2. And that's the reason why people think the heard the difference in the new version. And this is one thing we want to do. Um, so you can see the extension board, um, it's different from what we're going to do with the parallel circuitry so we won't be using reusing this board but the new parallel circuitry is relatively simple so we'll, we will do without the circuitry um, we just uh, directly soldering some wires and the resistors and we should be able to do that i'll show you that uh, later on and another beauty of the bryson design is the socket um, topology so basically how they mount these transistors is just two screws and then after you unscrew the screws you can say just uh, pull out this transistor from the socket so it's very easily replaced uh, field service so if you have a output stage um, damaged you can just buy some transistor and replace the transistor so everybody seems to be able to do the requirement but for me I'll, I'll just do some uh, replacement to upgrade the, the transistor and the circuitry. And uh, again, if we look at uh, you know, the main chassis, we notice there are two separate beautiful transformers. And this is uh, better than the single transformer in the new version. Here are the transistors we are going to use to replace the old one because I, ha I also have a few of the old one damaged so that um you can see this is you know motorola mgl 2119 this is the 94 so this is equivalent to 6521 so basically it's just one to one replacement the, the um property is very similar and the motorola these cans supposed uh, to be potentially even better than the original. And these are the output resistors we're going to use. Uh, we mentioned earlier that uh, the original is 0.15 ohm. These are the 0.25 ohms for more uh, stable uh, circuitry when we do parallel connection. So some more resistors we're going to use to replace. Remember we mentioned the uh, Voltage stage, the bias uh, resistor from 22 to 47. So those are, you see originally these are the 1 8 watts kind of um, resistors. We're going to replace with slightly higher power resistors here. Uh, and then we also plan to do another resistor. So I didn't mention early session, but this is not critical. You don't have to do this part here you can see that if you unsolder these wires from the main board and then you unscrew uh, the screws to hold the heat sink of the extension board and you can remove this extension module so you can work with it you replace the transistors and also you know do some uh, soldering and this is the socket i mentioned earlier to hold the transistor power transistor. So basically, um, you can just use this socket in place to solder the circuitry 
to this main, main board. You no longer need this uh, extension board because the circuit topology is totally different. It won't help too much to use the, to modify this board to do the parallel connection. So we finished the main board modification. You can see we replaced these resistors um, with larger value and also higher power so that we will have cooler operation temperature and also these uh, output resistors. So same similar on this way, the output resistors and the new resistors for higher power and higher uh, values. And of course, um, we also need to do these jumpers in order to do the parallel con connection. You see, this is not for 4B, but actually there was no jumper. So for 4B ST. So basically, in order for us to convert it to 4B SST, we need this jumper as well as a jumper behind this cable. So basically it's clearer to see this way. So the jumper here, you see it's not for 4B and the jumper here. So basically after we do that, this, the main board modification is completed. And by the way, I just want to point out, uh, you don't have to remove the board in order to replace the component. You can just, just use a solder iron and heat it up and remove the component and then the new one you can you can put them back in um, by uh, you know properly align the lead so that you can insert the lead into the the hole and then solder it in place so here's the uh, completed uh, board as i mentioned earlier we first modify this main board with the changing the resistors, the output resistors. And then you see now, this is the fun part. These are the socket I mentioned earlier to hold the um, connected power transistor. So we just um, remove that uh, PCB, printed circuit board, so that we can just it is so simple for the parallel connection. We just solder these resistors directly on top of the socket. So you can see the 0.25 resistor between E and the C and E and the C. And then we connect the B all to parallel to this, B to B. So they already leave a spot here for the B connection, B to B, and then the C, C, E connections. Similar on this side, we do the same thing. So now you can see this is the main circuitry with four transist uh, power transistors, and these are the four power transistors in parallel with these transistors. So now we have uh, the output circuit exactly the same as 4B SST or SST square. But the benefit is that I mentioned earlier, we have the double transformer as well as these metal can transistors. So it's supposed to be better in terms of power handling than those new ones on the um, SST and SST square, which are the plastic transfer voting part. So now uh, everything assembled back. See, left channel, right channel, two transformers, and uh, the transistor, you can see them, but they are covered, you need to cover them up because they carry voltage on the, the, the outside of the, collector um so pay attention about the voltage it's pretty high it's 85 volts so you could get some short you need to have two things done before you close the cover one is 
the uh, DC offset of the output because once you assemble everything back, change the transistor, change the resistor and everything, the DC offset may, may be uh, too large. So that DC offset is adjusted at a location. Let me show you. So there are two EC potential port there. The potential resistor one is this one, the blue one. There's a little screw on top and the other is a gray one. The blue one is to adjust the DC offset. So you can connect your um, output basically to, I'm connecting to a speaker and then connect that speaker to a, uh, say a voltmeter. So I put it on millivolts, so the display is millivolts. So currently I'm adjusting it to almost to zero, so about one millivolt. So that should be fine, you know, a couple of millivolts is not not a big deal as long as you're not a double digit that should be okay single digit um, adjust to that the potential meter for the uh, offset adjustment this is kind of a, you can do multiple turns the reason to use this kind of um, port is that uh, you can fine tune the output uh, dc offset so don't be afraid that you don't see too much change so you just keep turning and you can see the trend, whether it's increase or decrease, and then you can go that direction. And the second one is this, the bias adjustment. So basically this is critical. So it determine how much current when it's not uh, running through any music or whatever, no signals. The spec is, um, you see there are two a uh, test point there, the black ones, each of those two have two pins. So again, you connect the multimeter to each of those pins. You can see test point one, test point two. So basically those are the two circuitry in parallel. So each of them gave you the you know, the particular push-pull path, the current, and uh, the idea is you add them together to have like a total of 25 millivolts. That's about 40 milliamp per path. So there are the double paths. So this is called um, complementary kind of uh, push-pull. They have a, a special circuitry so that's the reason Bryson sounds so good. They call it quad complementary. You add those two voltages together. You, you, you measure them separately. You adjust them at the same time. So basically it's half and half, but there's some differences because the circuitry are different. In my case, one of the paths is about 12 millivolts and the other path is about 13 or 40 millivolts. So you don't have to be exact 25. I think some somewhere between 20 and 30 should be fine. So the higher the number, the warmer the amp will stay at uh, quiet uh, condition. So basically that's the two things you need to adjust. So this is how you connect the um, test point to adjust your uh, bias. So this is test point two, and you can add it to multimeter. So now we see 9 millivolts, 10 millivolts. <clears throat> so basically it's increasing because the temperature is changing. It bring up, the system bring up from cool to warm. So eventually it was um, stabilized. So I believe I adjusted to about 15 millivolts per test point. So Total is around 25 to 30. So it's kind of stabilized at 15. You see it's for it's coming down. So basically it's stabilizing around 14 point something. Now everything is connected and the source is the uh, on QC player through a direct cable. 
to this uh, just modified Bryston for VST. And uh, the unit we're going to compare with is this Marantz SR8012, which is considered a very high-end AV receiver. It's very capable. Actually, I use it to drive my speakers for quite some time. So now I have this beast and I compare with the two. The Bryson is definitely sound much, much better, especially in the bass control. It's very tight, much more powerful. In comparison, the Moran's actually lose some drews when you have very high volume. I will play a little bit, but this is through an iPhone recording, so you won't hear the uh, exact um, performance just uh, to show the to show what it is. And now we are driving to these speakers to so we'll quickly listen to what we're going to play here is a kind of a bass heavy. But meanwhile, the um, imaging, sound imaging is also better than say the high-end AV receiver. If I never knew you. 